Mountains to Sound in Kent, and also welcome our Mountains to Sound agents, our Keller Williams Puget Sound agents, and everybody from the Thrive Forward community. I'm so happy you guys are here with us today. It is so good to see you. Okay, so I want to start off, first of all, let's show you what we have planned for our team meeting today. So let me share my screen with you. So we're gonna start off a little bit with, hang on. Um, so it's Red Week. I hope everybody knows it's Red Week. It's Mo's birthday, 83rd birthday this week. So exciting. So we got a lot of talk today about what's happening with Red Day. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit with John about Compliance Corner and what's happening in phase one still currently for our um, for our um, Stay Home, Stay Healthy directive. Uh, we're gonna be, ha we have a great panel. So we have got Carla and then Cheryl and Dan Dennis who are gonna be talking with us today about bulletproofing your business. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit into stats as far as all of our broker metric stats that we normally talk about. And then Guru's gonna talk stats. And then what Guru is going to do is he's going to take a moment and talk tech. You do not wanna miss what he's gonna show you. Awesome sauce. And then of course, we're gonna go into Red Day. We're gonna, we've got Hannah Ranch coming on, we've got Carmen Holtman coming on, and then of course, Jennifer Thompson. So excited for all of that. Okay, so I wanted you to start you guys off with this quote, and it is from Mo Anderson. And it says, creativity flourishes in the absence of fear. Bold is an example of that. The fear at the beginning, um, knowing we couldn't have classes, there was fear. Creativity flourished and the new bold was written faster than uh, it seemed humanly possible. Change your mind and your circumstances change. And then she said, I'm so proud. That's from Mo. She's awesome. So I wanted to talk with you about that. And I actually wanted to um, share a little bit about my experience. I've been gone for about uh, almost two weeks. Um, I got very, very ill. And so I went to the doctor and discovered I had coronavirus. Ah! Now I, have, I haven't hardly left my house. So what we, we figured the little contact tracing looks like my husband had it a couple of weeks before um, I did, although he thought he was just a little under the weather. It didn't happen that much. But one of the guys that he works with, uh, my husband is an essential worker at his um, place he works. So that was, uh, he caught it from a worker at his office that did not, um, tell anybody that he was uh, feeling ill. He felt that he would not be able to um, to pay his bills if he had to take time off because he didn't have any PTO. So he decided to go to work. Now, at that time, he hadn't even been tested. It wasn't until he got really sick that he went in and he got tested um, and then didn't even tell anybody after that. So I wanna share with you guys just how important it is to stay home. So I had an incredibly mild version of the um, virus um, and it's like the worst um, flu I've ever had in my life. It was so scary. There were two nights in there that I um, was coughing so bad and I could not catch my breath. We almost went to the hospital. They had me on an inhaler and things like that, but, but I might've been one of those people that was in the hospital. Well, where does this come in talking about fear and your mindset? You know, it's, it's interesting when you're in that moment because there's a lot of fear around coronavirus. And when you get it and you test positive, 
That is so scary. But then a lot of you guys reached out to me and you were so sweet. I want to thank everybody for the cards and the flowers. <laughs> They're all over the place right now. And it was just such a wonderful thing that you guys did. And there's something about that that put me in a whole different light and a whole different perspective. Um, and I realized that I'm not alone. You know, all of us are sitting like right now, you're sitting in a chair and you're, you're staring at a screen uh, and you, you might feel alone, but you know what? We're not alone. I have every single one of you guys here every day. I could not wait to see faces today. It was so funny because, you know, when I don't have everybody here, even when I've got you online, and I know all of us feel the same way, at least we get to see faces. Here's one thing I came to really realize. First of all, I love all you guys so much. And second of all is this is going to be over. We will get through this. We will get through this together. And when we choose not to be fearful, when we choose to simply go, you know what? I am okay with this. I'm going to be okay. We're moving forward. And if you've got kids at home, there's so much going on. And sometimes you're tearing your hair out. It's interesting. I was doing a, um, uh, a mastermind this morning with our growth accountability group. And a lot of folks on there were feeling the funk, right? So I want to know, um, do me a favor, in the chat se uh, section, will you tell me if you're feeling the funk? Let's see how everybody's doing. Okay, Cheryl Peterson raised her hand. Absolutely. Raise your hand if you're feeling the funk. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Six people, seven, eight. Keep going. Oh, my gosh. Lots of funky people going on right now. I hear that, guys. Yep. Here's the thing. We're going to get through this. So what I'd like everybody to do, I want you to take a second with me and I want you to sit at the very edge of your seat and sit up straight and tall. Will you do that for me? Say I. I. Sit up straight and tall. Now there's something about the act of sitting up straight and tall that changes your state. It's called neuroassociative conditioning and it changes your state, it energizes you. If that energized you just by sitting on the state, uh, edge of your chair, would you do me a favor, raise your hand or put that in the comment section, either one. Yes, lots of hands raised. It changes your state. Getting up changes your state. Here's what happens. Most of us, when we're at home in front of the, the, the computer, we're like this, right? And we've got our chest collapsed and we're not breathing right. And, and if you're, you, you just keep feet more and more and more into that state of glum and gloom, to, to, to manage your state, to change it just like that, all it takes is a change of physical state. Just just move, change, and you're going to be okay. Take yourself out of it. Go smell some popcorn. Anybody? How many of you guys know the, the reference to that? I bet a few of you know the reference to that. Um, Pam uses that one all the time. I love when she does that. Okay. We have the ability to manage our mindset. When we're in fear, we are not creative souls. When we're in fear, we're in doubt, and everything starts becoming more and more and more oppressive. And that's where our funk comes from, because we just feel like it's never going to end. And by the way, if you're a real extrovert person, this is challenging for you. This is really challenging for you. Having said that, I'm here to tell you, I promise it's going to be okay. We're all going to be okay. All right? Okay, so again, from my heart out to all of you guys out there, I just want to say thank you again for, for loving on me so much. I can't wait to return the favor for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, have a wonderful conversation with my wonderful friend, Mr. John Hansen. John Hansen, come on in, would you? Good afternoon. Hi, John. It's good to see you again, my friend. How you doing? Doing great. I didn't know you were you were going to be back and doing it today, and so this I, you just have me so happy and smiling. I'm so glad. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, most people probably don't know. So John and I produce every morning at uh, around seven thirty. John and I produce the the um, compliance corners. 
Um, and so we, we basically start the day with each other every single day. And I, I'm, I got so used to you, John. I'm so glad to see you now. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, let's get into yours, John. Let me share my screen. And basically, John and I did not start talking beforehand, but John, what I basically did is I took all the points. I figured I'd go ahead and read them, and then we could discuss as we move along. Is that okay? Sure. Awesome. Okay, so the first thing to understand is that, well, I'm almost going the right way. Oh, not there, not there. There. All right, so Washington State has given us four-phase approach to reopening businesses and to public interactions. In keeping with those mandates, the following is how our three offices, Kent Furian and Federal Way, will proceed. So we'll start in phase one, May 5th through the 31st. The first thing is, number one, continue to stay home and conduct business virtually whenever possible. Am I right on that, Mr. Hansen? Yes, absolutely. So just because they uh, they have been kind of loosening the grip, so to speak, a little bit on our real estate business, um, they still the preference is still unquestionably they want you to stay home and do as much from home as you can do. So, for example, if you have a an inspector who's going out to to do an inspection uh, on on the property that your buyer is buying, um, you don't need to be there. If the seller is going to be there at home in the house, you should make the appointment, make the arrangements by phone for for the inspector to go to the house, do the inspection, and leave without you complicating things by being there, and and adding you know too many people in the house at a time. Okay, sounds very very good. And the next one here is. Offices will remain closed and minimally staffed with financial and back office only. Most support staff are available remotely to assist. The public may not enter. Tell us more about that, John. Yeah, so during this uh, phase one, um, which is tentatively going to the end of this month, they don't want the public going inside of our offices for any reason at any time. The only, only possible exemption there might be for that is that if uh, it's necessary for them to sign something that can't be done electronically, they've got to do it somewhere and there's no restaurants <laughs> open to go do that to. Right. So, so we might have to work something out by appointment only with the, with the uh, staff at the office to s sneak in as harmlessly as possible into a conference room, staying six feet apart, signing and getting out as quick as possible. Sounds good, sounds good. Okay, next one, just a little bit longer paragraph. Brokers, you agents out there, um, remember you are an independent contractor and may need to use the office for your own financial back office support and also to pick up checks and mail or to make photocopy scan, et cetera. Must always wipe down anything touched with wipes that are provided and sanitizers are provided to keep your hands clean. Brokers or agents with private offices may work from their offices only when they are the only occupant. I'm going to say that again, only when they are the only occupant and there's no person to person interaction with the staff. The private office door must remain closed during occupancy and six foot distancing must be maintained when entering and exiting the buildings. Yeah, so um, so just uh, just the, the thought that as Dennis and I uh, discussed this, we said, you know, we are in the culture uh, here at Keller Williams where even though we are a brokerage holding your licenses um, here and responsible for all the activities, you are still running your own businesses. And so the mandate here is that is that each business, you know, that has the necessity for a back office or a financial person to be there, they may go into their office for that. So we have some rented out offices in our uh, private offices within our offices. And if you do have a private office, that's your business. And so one person may be in that office at a time to do back office work, to do financial things for your business. Um, and while obviously observing all the protocols 
for cleanliness and everything else and, and distancing. Um, just want to remind you of, of that also. Okay, great. Number four, all training will be virtual. Nothing's changing there. Uh, that's, that's, that's correct. And I just, I wanted to go back for just a second, uh, just in my own mind, I, I wanted to also mention that, uh, that the, um, common areas in the offices that we have where you, where you can, uh, um, you know, go in normally and just sit, that kind of thing. We're, we're not going to be open to that until next month, until phase two, I should say. So in phase two, we will be open for those kinds of common areas to work from, uh, but we we are not um, yet feeling comfortable with that other than for going in, doing your business, getting your, picking up your checks, uh, uh, making some photocopies, things like that while observing those other issues. But yes, and so, so what was this one? I'm sorry. Oh, oh. and then the next one is all training will be virtual. Yeah. yeah so. So this is this is this is working pretty good uh, for the time being, and it's going to have to be done virtually for a while. There's no reason for us to be getting into a conference room together, sitting side by side, and that kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Number five is the broker may physically show a listing if following mandated protocols by appointment only, no more than two people in the house at a time, including the agent and or owners, maintain six feet of distance between broker and client and do not drive in the same car. Kind of hard to be six feet apart in the same car, isn't it, John? Uh, yes, and we, yes, and we have um, had a couple of, uh, I've, I've received a couple of inquiries from the Department of Licensing about uh, agents who were being spied on um, by by somebody who 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 saw you going into a house or whatever, and and in, in each of the cases it was it was fine. Protocols were being observed. I, I followed up on them. Everything was fine, but the general public doesn't know that, and they're just waiting to they're they're just like waiting to pounce on somebody. <laughs> about them. And so we had some neighbors calling and the Department of Licensing and things like that. So anyway, so those. Uh, but but the riding in the same car would be a big problem. That would be that would be a hard thing to deny. You know, yeah. so you want to make sure that you are meeting your client if you have to go out and show it. The preferred way would be to do, you know, electronic showings and that kind of thing. But if it, if they're at the stage where they've got to get in physically see it, then you can do that by appointment only. Remember that by appointment only, um, because we also got two dings from the MLS. Uh, actually, it was one ding against us, one we did against someone else for uh, for not uh, making appointments, just showing up. And so we want to make sure that we're that we the first step is always making that appointment. Okay, okay. And then we've got a sixth one here is appraisers, inspectors, repair and existing construction, photography, staging, landscaping may all happen with protocols being observed, which means that unless the broker is needed to unlock the house, the broker should direct activities from their own home and allow the homeowner by appointment to receive these professionals. Right, right. So um, you'll notice that there's a new one up there, landscaping, okay? So that, that was added one. Um, so if there is, you know, something with that, and you'll notice what is not added into that is signpost installation. Just want to remind you that uh, that is still something that is supposed to be unveiled in, in the next phase, phase two. But right now in phase one, it is not officially okay to do. I know that a lot of people are doing it and you're independent contractors and you make your own decisions on those things. Um, uh, but as the designated broker of the office, I can't, uh, the office says, I can't, I can't, you know, go against the uh, governor's order and say it's okay to do. I'm just letting you know that there are, uh, that there are um, utility finders out and working. There are post installers um, installing posts um, along with the landscaping, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And so we've got to, we just, I just want you to be aware that it's not going to be allowed according to the governor's order until phase two. Okay. Well, great. 
Well, you know, John, I think one of the most important things for everybody to really understand is we're still in this. This we 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 know that at a minimum we're at phase two or phase one until the thirty first. Am I right on that, John? Uh, tentatively, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's everybody just understand we're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. I promise. Keep doing what you're doing. By the way, Lindsay uh, actually has a really good point in chat here, and she says this could be a great opportunity for listing agents to send a letter to the neighbors, uh, like you might have done for open houses, letting them know what's going on and giving them a heads up. I love that, Lindsay. Thank you for saying that. That's awesome. Okay. Great, John. Thank you again so much, my friend. It's so good to see you, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 730. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, so I am really excited. We have a fantastic panel coming on for you right now. And so we have the amazing Carla Clark and the absolutely stupendously wonderful Cheryl and Dan Dennis. You guys want to come on in? Hi, Cheryl and Dan, how are you? Oh, you're on, you're, uh, on you. There you go. Now we can do it. Hey, Carla, how are you? I'm good. It's so good to see you guys. Good to so, see you. Yes. Okay. So interesting thing is in April, you guys, your teams actually did an extraordinary amount of business. And we're talking about facts or fear, right? And so right now, it really is about the facts. And the facts are that you've done some really great things. So before we, we get into that, um, what I was hoping we could do is, I mean, we'll start with you, Carla. Um, we've seen your face in here a couple of times, and I'm so happy that we get to see you. Would you tell us just a little bit about how long you've been in the business, a little bit about your team? Just, just fill some folks in that may not have seen you yet. Sure. So I've been in the business forever, about 25 years. Um, <laughs> I started the results team. I don't know. Don't laugh, Dan. Don't laugh. Um, the results team started eight or nine years ago. We've been almost a decade working under that name. Um, we love what we do. We've been at Keller for about three years and that's it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. How, much, how many people on your team now? So, um, COVID change of, um, change of lifestyle, change of pattern, talk about fear, um, so there are currently eight of us. Okay. We were 10. We're now at eight. And an awesome group of eight they are. I love yes, it. All right. Hey, Cheryl and Dan, tell us a little bit about you guys, your team, your business. So I started in about the same exact time as Carla, um, back in 1996 in the Maple Valley, Kent market area. And also similar to Carla, uh, Dan and I, somewhere around 1999, uh, went and saw this guy, his name was Gary Keller, in a room um, probably not much bigger than our training room is right now. Long Beach. In Long Beach, California. And we kind of started reading his books back then. And although I wish we would have been smart enough to join his company way back then, um, <laughs> also similar to Carla's experience, we didn't really become a full-fledged team until about 2013. We were Crutcher Dennis Real Estate Group. And as Crutcher is no longer in existence, um, we are now My Puget Sound Homes. And Ron Jones, um, who is our director of operations, really was the pinnacle to make us create the systems that implemented all Gary's programs in place and, and turned us into where we are right now. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, so, yeah, go ahead, Dan. I, I, since Carla's been in the business forever, I've been in the business more than forever because I, I started in the late seventies selling real estate up in uh, Woodenville when there were, you know, combination boxes and catalogs and everything was done. Teletype was the big thing that was happening back then. Um, so I was in the business for about four or five years and I got driven out when interest rates through a recession at that point uh, went close to 20%. I didn't know how to do that because I worked for a small company called McPherson's back then and they're no longer around. I came back into the business in 1990 uh, with a nice company from the Northwest called John L. Scott. And I didn't know it at the time, but one of the first people I met is he had lots of hair back there 
back then, and he drove an old Cadillac, and his name was Dennis Ranch. <laughs> meet the, the Ranch family, and I can remember very fondly carrying a little baby by the name of Hannah Ranch back then, and I didn't know that those people were going to change my life when we decided to come on over. That's, that is such an amazing story. By the way, everybody who's on this call right now under 40 is asking the question, what's teletype? Okay. So, <laughs> right there. Okay, Carla, I want to start with you for just a second. Um, your team took six listings in April. Extraordinary. So what did your team do to make that happen? And maybe even more importantly, what kind of challenges were you ha having with them? Were you having um, to do a lot of objection handlings with, uh, uh, with um, sellers? Tell us kind of what happened and how did that come about? Sure. So for us, we have been transitioning for months now into command. And every time there is a new system that is released within command, my business partner and our director of operations, Josh Clark, is on us to actually be using the tools that are there. So just before COVID, we were phasing out some amazing software systems that we had been using while waiting for command. And I don't think the time could be more perfect as opportunities were launched a team of eight to 10 people working from remote locations, all of us could visually understand. We were trying to create as many true opportunities as possible and move them from left to right. So if you're using command, you know what I'm talking about. The goal is moving them from left to right. When we hit the right jackpot, that's when you get your check and you've got happy clients that are referring other people to you. So that's what I'll say overall about systems. For those of you who are in the listing class that I did several months ago, I made um, the bold declaration, and I think Dan was in the room and went, wait a minute, Carla, that's a lot, that it was our goal, um, my goal, to do 90 closed listings this year. So do the math, six in April um, is not going to get me there. Um, and so there's been a lot of conversation around all of that. I just want to be sure that people who maybe haven't been 25 years in the business who are looking at their business wondering, what do I do with this? All of us at most levels are trying to figure out how do we keep pushing forward towards our goals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I think that's really important to remind myself every day, this is what I said I was gonna do, what is it gonna take to get that done? And more importantly, with our mission being building abundant lives through real estate, what an opportunity for us to really get in there, go deep with our clients, have these care conversations, learn more about their life, their fears, and figure out how we're going to move them forward. Mm. Does that make sense? It sure does. So in addition to the six that we actually listed in April, we signed eight that are now in preparation, getting ready to go on the market in the next 30 days. Those eight were different than the six that we brought that had been getting ready 30 days before because I had to get over the belief that this was going to be short-lived, right? We'd get really good at our systems. We'd go deep with our conversations. We'd clean up things within our business that needed attention. Who was going to get excited about listing their house? very quickly in conversations with my business partner and my accountability partner, it became very clear that I didn't have permission to have that kind of mindset. Wow. So began plugging into all of the things that are being offered through Keller to get your mind right and realizing I needed to have conversations. And for someone who's also done a little bit of training that our goal is always to bring the seller to the office Great. I have no office to bring them to. So everybody's laughing. Ah, how can she get people to sign an agreement? She hasn't seen their house, right? I bring them to the office. Well, now I can't bring them to the office. So now what do I do? If you know me, I know zero about technology. It took me three days just to figure out how to find www.zoom, right? So then I've got to very quickly figure out how am I going to do a full listing presentation with a level of confidence that I'm gonna walk away ready to authenticize sign a 1A, and if they are comfortable, and we've been through all of the steps and criteria, and we do have both for our buyer consult and our listing presentation, what our requirements, our prerequisites are, and we're not kidding about those today for safety reasons, 
um, to get people you know, through the steps. So then I'm going out and doing the physical um, appointments in full garb, right? So if they're not ready at the end of that 20 to 60 minute Zoom call, depending upon how many questions they have, are they a past client? Is it a new conversation? We've taken our buyer and seller guides and turned them totally digital so they can be flipping through while they're having a glass of wine or a cup of coffee on their living room sofa. And it's turned out to be a really nice way to have that conversation, right? Mm -hmm. They're not ready to sign, then I have to figure out why, which is no different than any other conversation you have with the seller, right? Mm -hmm. It's how do I go deeper to figure out what are their goals? If they're not ready, one of two things are going on. They're either afraid, we're all a little afraid right now, right? So mm -hmm. there's fear going on or haven't given them enough facts. So we've leaned very heavily back into our lore, right? Just the simplistic um, viewpoint that here, week over week, we have the lowest amount of inventory that we've seen in a long, long time, especially new inventories, new pending sales over um, new listings. We still got more pending sales than we've got new listings. So sure. this may be your moment. And if you are considering moving, I don't know what this is gonna look like, I've been through lots of this, right? But at the same time, this is, you know, a um, pandemic in addition to the economic cartilage that this has left and what that's going to look like in the future. And I think we can approach it um, knowing that we all have a little bit of anxiousness, mm -hmm. but, but all we can do is take the next logical step. And for right. a lot of our clients, the next logical step is to move forward in their plans. What is their dream? What is their goal? Questions we should always be asking. And when this is all over, what do they want their life to look like? And what can we do today to help them get there? Absolutely. You know, it's interesting, there's, there's three things that are really kind of, of um, um, sticking out for me with what you're saying here, Carla. Number one, you actually had to start with mindset. And you, it sounds like Josh was really pushing you to to um, take a, a closer look at what some limiting beliefs might have been on there. Second of all, it's there is absolutely method to your madness. There's a procedure that you look at, that you relook at, that you restructure. So, it, and, and I would I would venture to guess. I, I I think I'm right on this. It's all written down. I'm sure. All right. Down. And then the third thing, there's a skill set that's really involved with understanding the scripts and the dialogues are going to take place in order to be able to have that objection handling. Am I seeing that right with kind of those three buckets? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to realize that it isn't the difference between night and day, right? It's the difference between maybe dusk and later in the evening, right? It's, it's really, it's really, these are all just okay. different. I gotta be careful what I say. I'm gonna say these are just different shades of gray, but I think you could take that wrong. So what I'm saying to you is, we took what we already know. Cheryl's laughing at me here. <laughs> very long, it's just my personality. And so I apologize for that. I'm very serious about this, but I have to make jokes. So I, I feel like um, we're doing things in the same way we have always done them. We just have to be on point, right? We cannot be telling ourselves stories. We cannot be making excuses why we're not doing business because wherever you're at in your business and in your life, you can start right where your feet are planted today and just decide what the next step is. And there's a lot of people standing around you who'd love to help you figure out how to get there. And I'm grateful for all those people in my life, like uh, Cheryl and Dan, you know, there's just... We're surrounded by great people who are just always sharing. Yep, absolutely. Well, gosh, thank you so much for that, Carla. That that's some really great insights. And I know that you know I always have to thank you so much just because you and your team um, are always giving so much certainly to our office as well as both of our offices. So thank you for for being who you are every single day. I love it. Okay, so Cheryl and Dan, you guys, your team had fourteen written units in April. So a couple things for this. First of all, how'd you make that happen? How long were they in your pipeline? What challenges did you have moving forward? Tell us the story of, of these 14. Well, I don't know that there's really an actual story for the 14. 
in, in the, in the essence that it's business for us on, um, I won't say as usual, but I think just like where Carla's at with her team, we have a pretty high taskmaster director of operations and very systematic guy who we very, who very quickly, literally, I mean, jumped in with both feet to where his wife was protecting his door so that he could do what he needed to do to get his team completely up and running very rapidly. So we went virtual uh, literally from day one. We had, uh, well, within week one, I should say, um, but by the time we finally acknowledged the fact that we really couldn't go to the office because we were being thrown out. I'm just kidding. And um, then we started to reach rich dad, poor dad, and we decided to shift, no pun intended, literally that week. And our team read the entire shift book in about two and a half to three week period. Sweet. It started um, really implementing and taking Gary's words of wisdom, you know, double down and do what you have to do. And each person on the team, we held each other accountable. We had a huddle every single solitary morning. Um, it felt like the Brady Bunch, kind of like right now where you're all looking at each other. And Virtual huddle. Yeah, we had a virtual huddle every morning. And, and so as far as where the, those pieces of business were, I, I think it's almost as in, in essence like where we are right now. It's a third, a third, a third. Because in truth, that was probably only about a third of the business we normally do. A lot of it fell away because of the whole world changing. Um, a third of them were probably brand new, just came in the, in the business and, and weren't really affected by what was going on in the market. And, and you said the key word, they're written units we still have to get them to the right of the screen, right? We still have to get them closed. So what we're finding is we're just really shifting through the, the systems and, and a third of them are brand new. A third of them have been in the system and this, this pandemic hasn't affected them good, bad, or indifferent. And a third of them, um, we're having to hold their hand all the way through till the very, very end. And then hoping even the day of, of closing that those people are going to actually achieve keys because we've got people who've, I mean, lost their jobs and whose life has changed. I mean, like yours, Cole, it changed overnight. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody ever wants to admit where they might be at the minute, hoping that it doesn't happen. And then it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think after I got over the first, God damn it. And I got over my frustration in going out in the garage and throwing things around out there. I, I, I found that the one thing that, I, that, that Gary has always said to us, find the motivated. Mm -hmm. that, that was our rallying cry to our team when we had our, our team meetings every single morning, is find the motivated. We may have to find twice as many people but find the motivated because there are people out there with their hands up that want to put their homes on the market. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that, that I found myself talking to our team about and my lovely wife is, is something that I read a lot of books about the Navy SEALs and one of their sayings that they have is slow is fast. Mm -hmm. And we had to slow down on our team slow down and become very, very methodical on what we're doing and make every single call count, every single appointment count. Every time I went on a, a listing appointment, and yes, I did go to people's houses, I did follow, follow protocol, but I had to make sure every one of those were, they were golden because they were, because I didn't know if that was going to be a great appointment or it was just going to be a good appointment and we're going to still follow up with those people and put them on the market three months from now. Right. Um, so those are the things that I, I kind of live by. I, things have not slowed down for us. Um, we are still busy. Our goals have changed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Changed. <laughs> and, but not the way we, we look at business. Uh, I'm, I, I say it all the time. I'm fortunate enough to, that I am married to my coach and we talk about real estate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And yesterday when we were outside working in our yard, which looks absolutely spectacular, <laughs> we were pulling weeds and, and we talk about real estate or the phone's ringing and we go, Hey, who's this? You know, and, and it just, it, it's just different, but it's absolutely the same. And, and we won't stop. We will not stop because we still have a lot to accomplish. 
And then one Navy SEAL saying that gets said all the time that we learned when we were in California. Shoot them between the eyes? No, embrace the suck. Oh, embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. <laughs> Shoot them between the eyes. Really, Dan? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, here's the other thing, too. And, and I've learned this from Dan and I follow Brian Buffini for, for many, many, many years. Oh. I mean, knowing his family members and everything else is how close we were to the Buffinis. And one of the things that I always remember, and for those people who even remember what the heritage profile was, which is basically an ABA or a KPA or everyone's different version of that. He used to say for me, my motto in life was to play life like a game, play it like a game. Mm -hmm. And so years ago when we read um, Jim Collins book, Good to Great, um, the shark, what happens when a shark stops swimming? He dies. Nice. And so we have our shark sheet and it's over our whole kitchen is turned into a virtual board and every one of our, our yeah, our team members, we cheer each other on because we've got a group that we account to each other and who, who got a shark because in order to feed the shark, you got to get minnows because the minnows, you know, so we play it backwards like a game and, and all of our appointments set appointments held, you know, agencies take shark sheet. Yeah, shark sheet. Love it. Love it. And so we, we just, we play our business strategically mm -hmm. and we know that right now strategies are kind of off. We, we realize that. And so we become um, like the, the rich dad and rich dad, poor dad. And we've decided to have tactics as opposed to strategies. Mm -hmm. And we literally just check off the boxes and it could be honestly, you guys, as simple as the, the, Business is harder right now. We will admit that. We know that it's a little tougher, but it might be that you are that person on your team that just helps the other person smile for the day. That might be all they can achieve and it's okay. But what, the one thing that I lean into your database, I don't care what kind of database management system you have. Command is doing an awesome job for everybody. Lean into your database for your guests because in 08 and 09, the great real estate recession, <laughs> We did maybe we were very fortunate if we did one maybe two transactions a month, mm -hmm. and the good ones always came from our database, and that's where we're finding our good, our the really good business right now. Right now is coming through referrals and through our database. So lean into your database; it's it's like gold. And be honest with them. Right. Be completely transparent and honest with them. Because they want to help you, don't you think, Cheryl? Your database wants to help you. They do they want to help you. And so those conversations so important and trying to figure out how do we match people with needs with people who want to give, right? Mm -hmm. So just always listening, you know, when we hang up from our database calls, it's always, what is the point of action, right? We're going to call them back in three months. Do they need a card? Uh, did we hear that, you know, they could use a grocery stop, you know, do what, what is it that we can do? Because in some small way we can all do, something mm -hmm. you know what's so funny that you say that too carla because right when this very first happened and i mean we all know the, the the silly joke that's gone through with the toilet paper and all of that and how that became sort of fun but we actually really did provide that and paper towels to somebody and you it was like we gave them gold because mm -hmm. then we get other phone calls and it wasn't because someone else needed something but they were so thankful that we reached out and were able to do something for somebody else. And so Carla, you're so, I mean, I know it's funny. But Toilet it's, paper makes a great housewarming gift. <laughs> I, I mean, was way more worried about the coffee than the toilet paper, but it's <laughs> settled out. I think we're all gonna, we're all gonna be okay. And if we choose, we are all going to be better on the other side. So True. are our organizations, so are our businesses. Um, and I think, this is nothing that's been heavy on my mind for whoever's listening. It's like, I am loving seeing people in my market area who have really seen themselves as competitors, really lean into how do we be collaborators? We yeah. can take this industry to a whole new level if we could just get over ourselves and really make it about what it's about, which is every client being the hero in their own story. We just get privilege of walking with them. It's never about us. Very, very Thanks. true. Thanks. And the only, the only thing I'm sad about is the person that didn't get to be on this call. And I do want to say to for Cole, um, David Berg did tell Dan and I, 
he was the other person that was to be on the panel and, and for whatever reason he'd have the time or day or whatever it wasn't matched and he said and we could all learn from him so I hope we get another opportunity to hear from him because really? he transitioned his business I mean it's no secret that he's one of the biggest geeks in our whole Keller Williams system because he's so tech savvy mm -hmm. and the way that um, David runs his business is um, different than Carla and Dan and I because we're just of a different generation possibly. But he um, said he why he's busy today is because of one of those virtual appointments. Most everything he's done that way, he's, he was there before any of us ever had to be. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we get the opportunity to share his story because I just wanted to put a plug in because he did do so well this last month. Well, you know, I love that. And I'll just invite him on next week because I think that that is fantastic. A little bit about his story is that he closed 10 transactions in April. Now, if any of you guys know, a lot of transactions, you know, there's been quite a few who have fallen off because of circumstances that have happened with those buyers right now, or those sellers that weren't able to move forward with that with, for some reason or another. So being able to get 10 transactions closed is amazing. I know a lot of people are really going to want to hear from him. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much. You were so amazing. Hey, a real quick question for you, Dan, is the shark sheet. We're getting a few comments on that. Is it possible for us to share that with, uh, share that out with people? Maybe we can get that to Goldie and she can get that out for everybody. We'd be happy to. Love it. Okay, great. Well, again, thank you guys so much. It is always amazing to hear from you and, and to get your insights. So I uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about facts, because today is about facts or fears. I'm going to talk a little bit about facts, and I'm going to go into, and you're going to forgive me for a second, because this is normally Dennis, and Dennis and Pam had some things they had to attend to today, so this is, uh, I'm going to do my best to, to play Dennis for you. So let me just share my screen with you. All right. So here is our, um, the past um, uh, six months of what's been happening with us. And of course, this is our for sale. One thing I want, to, want you guys to notice, and this is the, the past two weeks, the end of past two weeks. So this is April 27th and then May 4th right here. Guys, look at this. As far as for sale, we are actually up. It is the highest week that we have had in the last six months. And we put more uh, homes on the market. That's extraordinary. I hope you guys can really see this. This is absolutely extraordinary. Now then if we go into under contract, you're gonna notice that we are up there, um, we're still up 2.3 over last year, 2.3% over last year. And this is our third best since uh, it looks like March. So the uh, March 16th, well, actually, let's go back a little farther than that. Let's go from February 24th through March 3rd. And you're going to see we're about the third best since then as far as under contract. Okay, that's extraordinary. And what that's telling me is that business is still happening. And this is information that you guys could really, really share with your um, clients. Let's take a look at sold now. Let's add sold into that. And again, you're going to notice that these are come down just a little bit. I'm going to actually take away the for sale and the under contract for a second. And you can kind of see sold. We're dropping just a little bit here. So that's understandable. Okay, so that's a number that I really want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on as far as the closings are going. But if what we know is that is a lagging indicator, our leading indicator are those homes that are on the market right now. That's phenomenal. So for all of you guys that have taken part in that, I think you need to give yourselves a big, huge round of applause. And by the way, Jennifer is asking, is this all King County? This is King and Pierce County put together, okay? Um, uh, and so Maria, yeah, that's Maria, that is for uh, King and Pierce County. All righty then. So, um, and we can go into expired just a little bit. We'll just look at the rest of the details there for a second. Look at the expireds are climbing up now, guys. Okay, so some of those might be opportunities for you. The question is, is why did they not sell? Was it a corona-related um, issue? Was it an employment-related issue? Not sure, but those are some really good numbers to keep on track. And then we can kind of look at what happened, what's new. Look at this. 
look at how high this is. And by the way, if you'll notice, our price point is right around 560,000 uh, is our average between King and Pierce County. So again, lots of really, really great things happening there. Okay, so so I don't forget, what kind of questions do you guys have? Can we get a printable copy or a link so we can post on our pages? You better believe it, Trish. Um, uh, Goldie, if you're watching, do me a favor and take a note of that and we'll get this out to everybody today. We can do that. Any other questions, guys? Just place them in the chat box if you have questions. Can you show this in units view instead of the median price? Let's see if I can do that. Yes, there we go. Is that helpful? So let's start back with for sale. Let me just take off the new. So for sale, 7,192 up above the previous week of 7,128. Fantastic. If we look at under contract, those numbers uh, really go is 961 was the week before and 1056 on last week at sold we have um, that dropped a bit 743 versus 500 as far as his closings go if we look at our expired numbers we have 147 to 128 and then finally on new we take off expired and then we've got 1172 okay um top left look at the box in the top left four views over here that's the one just meaning price okay uh can you do for sale again missed the number sure can for sale there we go and we've got 728 last week 7192 7128 the week before Okay, take a good picture of that. Again, we will get these all out for you guys to be able to share out. Now, here's what I'm excited about. Can I take this down? Anybody still need this or anything else before I take it down? Going once? You're welcome, Jessica. Going twice? Okay, so I'm really excited. I'm gonna in, uh, invite my friend Guru Singh to come on in. Guru, how are you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Hey, good, good to see you too. How are you? I am great. So we actually have two things that you're going to be talking about today. The first thing, you're going to go into InfoSparks and show us the data that all of our agents can pull right now. But then you're actually going to take us through how to take that data and turn it into a, a, a campaign and command. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. So I will share my share screen. Your screen. I'm going to hop out and let you take over that for a minute. Sound good? Thank you. Yes. Cool. Okay, here we're at uh, InfoSparks. Uh, if you don't know how to get to it, just log into your MLS. Uh, I'm gonna go back here and you can click on stats and then InfoSparks, will, which will bring you to this page. So once you're here, right now it's showing everything for the entire MLS. Um, if we just want it for King County, we can put King and then as you can see, the second option will be County. Uh, this is a line graph, so I will change that to a bar graph and I will do that only for a year. So as you can see, uh, we're now at our average sales price for King County for April is $749,535. Um, so you can change that if you want to add an area here. If you want to, let's say, compare counties, I can put Pierce. And this will give you a comparison between King County and Pierce County with average sales price, if you wish to do that. But you can also do this by cities. Uh, so if I want to do King County, then I want to say, let's say I want to do Kent. Uh, they'll compare Kent and King County. Um, and then on the bottom here, you can also take a look at pending sales, homes for sale, new listings. If you click on new listings, that just tells you in King County how many new listings. Uh, for April 2020, uh, we can look at pending sales, we can look at closed sales, uh, days on market, we can look at a median days, or we can look at uh, average days on market, and, and, and the list just goes on and on and on. So uh, I will go into Kent because I live in Kent. Um, as you can see, the average days on market in Kent is 27. Uh, that's for April. The average price per square foot is 233, right? 
and uh, pers- and we can look at the days on market again is 27, and then the pending sales is 1699. So here is where you can get all your data, and then we're going to look at how we can take this data and take it over to uh, command. But before that, you can also uh, change anything you want up here. So for example, here it says all price ranges and look, they're looking at all property type. So you can just stick that to residential and you'll see the numbers will change. And it's crunching the numbers. We'll give it a minute. Uh, so 1243 instead of 1699, we can pick all bedrooms or if you want to market to a four bedroom or four or three bedroom, we can change that. Uh, all construction type, um, we can use previously owned and even go forward and even get granular on the data, uh, Rambler, two-story, one-story with basement, split entry, or a townhome. Uh, you can pick square footage. You can exclude waterfront uh, or include waterfront or only waterfront, uh, however you want. So as you can see, once we plug those in, our data changes. Um, and then on the bottom, it shows you we're looking at in Kent, previously owned, residential, and we're excluding waterfront properties. So that way you know what kind of data you're looking at. So, so far, uh, any questions on what we have here? Looks like you're good to go so far on that, Mr. Singh. Okay, thank you. Uh, right, okay. So then we will go over to command. So this is uh, the command page after you log in. Uh, once you log in, you're gonna come on to the left side here. As you can see, there's a tab for designs. You're gonna go there. Uh, once you go to designs, uh, there are a bunch of different options for your templates, uh, email, landing page, social, print, uh, agent site, uh, or you can do a video. Uh, so we're going to go uh, to social and we're going to say create new. And here you can also again pick what kind of template you would like. I'm going to show you just one and then you can take it over and then you know play around with the other options that we have here. And we're going to click on next. So once it comes here, it gives you a bunch of options uh, down to the left side here. If you have done your designs before, you can go back to my designs and then you can tweak those. So for this one, we're gonna go to listings and we're gonna go to local expert. So as you see, there's different tabs here in the local experts. Uh, Facebook has uh, designs, uh, Instagram has designs. And um, the good thing about this is once you're done with this, you can download this and you can set it to an email campaign and you can send it to anybody you want. So you can do it this way too. Uh, I like posting on Facebook and Instagram, so I, I like these stats. So you can pick at any, any one of these and, and then change the data as you go. So let's pick this one because I like the photo and I like the numbers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's loading. So once we're here, uh, this is where you'll be able to change the data. Uh, now he says, how's your market local activity in the last 24 hours? We know the data we're looking at is from April. So you can actually change this. You can click on here and then click on this typewriter. And it'll just pop up. It's easy to do it this way. So you can say local activity uh, and you can delete this for April 2020. And then you can say uh, Kent. That way, you know, the data is relevant to, to where and you can click on save changes. So as you can see, it's, it's not two lines. If you want to keep it in one line, you just stretch out the side there and you can like adjust it to where you want it. Uh, here on the bottom, you have uh, new listings, new contracts and closings. So if you want to keep it the same, we can go back to InfoSparks. We are in Kent. We want to take a look at new listings and it's 1,223 new listings. So we can go back, click here, click on the typewriter and 1,223, save. And as you can see, it overflows the text. And once again, you can grab the side, make it a little longer and then move a little to the left. New contracts, we can go back, pending sales, 1,093. And 
save changes. Once again, data overflows, just stretch it out a little bit and then it will adjust. And if you want to say, instead of saying new contract, you want to put something else there, you can change that too. You can say um, pendings, for example, if you want. Save changes there. And as for closings, we can go back. We can look at monthly, oh, that's month supply close. Let me take a look if we have close sales. 1,118, we'll come back here, change that. Save. There we go. And you can move these around. You can move this little to the left. You can move this little to the left and then move that little to the right. So there's enough gap between everything. And on the bottom here, if you see, it gives you a little text to update everything. So we can click on it, change it. We can put a date on it that, hey, we changed it. Uh, today is May 11th. So we can say 05, 11, 2020. And I can take these brackets out. And information taken from source, so you can put uh, Northwest MLS and save changes. Uh, you can change your Keller Williams logo here. You can come down to logos. If you don't have any here, you can upload them. I already have them set up, so I'm just gonna change that here. If you have your company logo, you can grab that too, put it in there, uh, change the size put it in the middle, put it to the side, however you want it. Uh, so there's that. This is how you create one of these. And once again, you can go back and then pick and choose on which one you like. Once you're done, uh, I'm gonna move this out of the way. You can click here, download. You can get a JPEG file, you can get a PNG file, or you can get a PDF file. Uh, you know, if you wanna print it or send it as an attachment in email, however you wanna do it. Uh, any questions so far? I'm sorry, I went a little too fast. Well, and here's Guru's the neat up. thing on this one, Guru. So I think everyone might might not know that Josh um, did a wonderful class on this a couple weeks ago called um, Facebook and Command Equals Money. So I've just put in the um, chat the link uh, on uh, to that class on our YouTube channel so you can see that again. This is great, Guru. This is awesome. So would you then put this, this is, um, this particular one, is this on Instagram, on Facebook? How would you normally use this one? Yeah, this one is for Instagram. Uh, the reason uh, they're, they're different is because the size of the photos that are applicable to Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so you can go back and get the Facebook one or you can use one however you want. Uh, uh, me, I can take this down, I can put it into an email, I can send it to everybody. So okay. it's, it's up to you however you want to use it, but this one is particularly for uh, Instagram just because of the size, um, how it's cut down. It's, it's like a, almost a square photo. That was so easy. What other questions do you guys have? Any more questions for Guru on this? That makes it so easy, Guru. It obviously so easy just to get that data, put it in here, send that out, and then people have answers for how the market is. Great job, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, and you can change the picture you want. Uh, you can delete the picture, put anything else new there. And once this is saved, uh, like I showed you guys back there in my designs, it will be there. So if you're doing it once a month, all you got to do is go back to my designs and change the numbers and you're good to go. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Well, once again, thanks, Guru. You want to give me my screen back? Oh, yes. Hold on. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. There we go. Uh, Thank thanks. you. Thank you so much, my friend. I so appreciate you every single day. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we have a really big event coming up on Thursday and it's called Red Day. Woo -hoo -hoo. So if I could bring in our wonderful Red Day spokespeople for today, that'd be Hannah Ranch, Carmen Holtman, and Jennifer Thompson. Once you guys all come on in here. Hi guys. Hi guys. We'll bring Carmen in. You're out and you're at now, Hannah's at an inspection. This is what a diehard she is. She's actually at an inspection and she's still here for us. So way to go on that, Hannah. So appreciate you guys. Okay, so I am actually gonna share my screen for just a second. And here, of course, we have Red Day. 
Um, and I want to go through just a few things and you guys can talk us through it if we can. So here's what we have going on. On um, Thursday, we have a um, red day going on for provide personal protective equipment through Fab Lab. Hannah, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Fab Lab is uh, what they had started out as kind of like a business, a 3D printing business, and they evolved it. And when this pandemic started, they decided to implement and start making PPE for. Uh, first line workers and they let me know that they are behind in their goal a um to, to raise enough money to get the the material to make the mask and b they're also needing people to step in and come into their uh, shop and help build this the, these masks as well so i asked if we could have may 14th um as a day to get in there and uh participate i know a lot of people were feeling like how can we get involved without just just donating or you know either way they've got both options so i thought that was really neat they are making this specifically uh going to be social distancing requirements only six people in at a time and you must be wearing a mask so if you're going to participate please do just be ready to wear your mask as well so that's pretty much how that goes six dollars for one mask six dollars for a face shield that's all it is um, and they had asked us to kind of stop, step up and make a competition. So our goal was 100 units, um, but really he was challenging each office to get in 100 units each. So that'd be 200. That'd be fantastic. Okay, guys, and what we've done is we went ahead and put in the links for both donating as well as volunteering into the chat there. So feel free to check those out. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so next thing we have is going to be a blood drive at Cheney Stadium. Who's telling us about the blood drive? I will also be telling you about the blood drive, I think, here. Um, unless Carmen wants to step in, either way. Uh, blood drive, Cheney Stadium. I know a lot of the slots are full, but they're going to be doing that, I think, all week long. So get on to Bloodworks Northwest website, check out their time slots, and sign up if you guys can. I know that they're in need of, of donations really bad right now. So um, if you can't make it to May 14th, do sign up for a different day. Um, it's just right at Cheney Stadium. It'll be super fun. So go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I noticed um, on their page this morning is that they're actually looking for O negative blood in spe specifically. So if you are an O negative uh, donor, it would be phenomenal if you could go ahead and make that. They're giving priority to O negative right now for those appointments. So fantastic yeah. job on that. All right. Next one I know Carmen's going to tell us about because this has got Carmen written all over it. It's our Senior Center Parade and Food Drive. That is right. Um, first of all, hi everybody. Oh my gosh, I miss everybody so much. Just like, ah, I'm thinking about buying um, hazmat suits just so I can give hugs. So I miss you all so much. Um, okay, so Senior Center Parade. So we are hoping to have as many of you join us at Kloshi Ilhi. It's the place that we, we spent time last year doing uh, yard work and odd jobs for, for the seniors who live there. They are all depression era residents. They are a depression era community and they have taken um, this stay at home order very, very seriously and are working with what they have on hand um, in their own homes to kind of survive this. So in order to keep them home, we wanted to actually see if we could not only do a, a car parade through their community, but we also want to do a food drive. So this is going to be really, really fun. If you guys can all meet here at Keller Williams Puget Sound in our parking lot, I will be collecting all the food that day. You can also spend about half an hour, 45 minutes or so decorating your car. I've, I'm, I'm hoping to get the things in the mail to do that. Otherwise, I have some of my own personal stuff on hand. Um, we can write on windows. We're just writing um, really great words of encouragement um, for the residents there. Like, you know, great job staying home and staying safe. And, um, you know, we love you. Keller Williams loves you. And we're going to provide food for them because they are really truly staying in place. Now, the cool part is we're going to 
meet at the at the community at two o'clock and they are going to have like their little golf cart all decked out and cute and they are going to lead us through the entire community in like the most efficient way to make sure we hit every corner of it and we weave through the proper way so um i am just so excited to just have our music blaring and something told uh, somebody told me that there might be a t-rex sighting um, I don't know, you might want to talk to Jackie about that, but uh, we're just so excited to be able to go see all of our beautiful seniors and just shower them with some love and encouragement. So thanks for letting me say that. And I miss everybody and I love you. Okay, that's it. We, we miss you so much too, Carmen. I tell you what, I cannot wait to just see you and give you a huge, huge hug. <laughs> love you, Carmen. I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, thank you, Annie. I appreciate that so much. All righty then. And then the last thing we have here is our telethon for Vine Maple Place. Miss Jennifer, tell us all about this amazing cause. So this amazing cause, uh, Vine Maple Place, many of you are familiar with them. And for those of you that aren't, they are a nonprofit out of Maple Valley that is committed to end uh, the cycle of homelessness through uh, safety, stability, and self-sufficiency. And so we want to help uh, 83 families have one night of safety because Mo is turning 83. So one night of safety costs $33. And so we have got a bit.ly link um, to share with folks that you can send out an email, you can send via text. We're gonna have a telethon um, Thursday from six to 7 p.m. Uh, we need uh, your name and your email address so we can get you the information today so you can get that on your calendar. For those of you that are in bold, perfect opportunity to do some lead generation. Um, we've got some scripts of things you can say in an email as well as on the phone. So we're trying to make it as simple as possible. Um, but really, Vine Maple Place has a huge need. They had a huge need before COVID happened. It's even bigger now. And so $33 gives one night of safety to a family. So partner with us, celebrate Mo's 83rd birthday. Let's help 83 families have one night of safety. I love that. And as a matter of fact, I believe Carla Clark and her team put together a video for us that we'd like to show you. And we're going to ask for your forgiveness just a little bit. For some reason, the, the audio track and the visual track on this are not quite matching up. So forgive us on this, but we'll just go ahead and play this for everybody. Hi guys, Keller Williams family. We are reaching out to you today to remind you about the upcoming Red Day. The culture community is so excited to invite you to this year's event. It's happening next Thursday, May 14th. We're partnering, partnering with Vine Maple Place and we're really excited to tell you more about it. Due to COVID-19, My Maple Place has an urgent need to help secure safety, shelter, and food for moms in need. $33 secures one night of safety, and an additional $2.34 also secures a meal for them. We're asking everyone in the office to join us in reaching out to your sphere and asking for donations in this time of need. So we're hosting a live uh, Zoom telecom next Thursday, 6 to 7 p.m., the 14th. We'll put it on your calendar. Um, we are inviting, wanting, we want you to invite your clients to watch. Um, we will be live. And so they can go to the Facebook page, the uh, Keller Williams Mountains to Town Facebook page, um, and watch us there. So come early, get on there at 545, and just plan to stay till 715. While you're making your calls, Vine Maple Place and a few agents from our office will be sharing information about Vine Maple Place, their mission, and Red Day. And for all you bold pivot attendees, this is a huge opportunity for you to get your 40 contacts in a day, as well as to serve the community at the same time. So May 14th, remember to say. Oops. Sorry. I don't know what happened there, guys. Hang on. It is one hour of your lead gen time to be able to use the time block during the telephone. Speaking of time blocking, we want to make sure that, that it's clear what we're asking here, right? It's not just that you get excited about this or that you think it's a cool idea. We're asking for your commitment. So please, by Monday, May 11th at 9 a.m., reply to this email to say that you're going to get involved. We'll put it on your calendar because, as we know, if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. 
to be sure to wear your red. Whether that's a shirt, a hat, jewelry, or a scarf, you will be on camera during the telethon and everyone will be muted. So let's all gather together celebrating Mo Anderson's 83rd birthday. This is going to be an amazing opportunity to do great stuff in our community. Find Maple Place needs our help and we need you. So get your spirit list ready. You can start making invitations to give starting now. We are so excited. Get committed, get registered. We'll see you next Thursday. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. That was such a great, great video. Thank you, Carla, and your team for putting that together. We so appreciate you guys. Listen, I think this is going to be a really fantastic um, red day for everybody. By the way, a couple people are asking about, um, Jennifer, I'll ask you this question real quick, about scripts um, and saying, do we have a script that has the details so we can reach out to our database and invite them? This is probably for all of our things that we're, we're doing maybe. Um, even the blood drive, things like that. Um, so do we have something that we could send out to everybody on that, Jennifer? For the Vine Maple Place, we do have scripts and we will upload them uh, into the documents on Facebook. So they have that. Perfect. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now just to let you guys know, we're, we're, I want us to do something here. We, again, Red Day is one of the biggest opportunities that we have uh, throughout the year to really give back to our community. And so what we'd love to take a moment to do, I know all you guys can do, and I'm putting it here into the um, chat, is the link to go ahead and sign up for one of those events. So do me a favor, go ahead and actually let me get the right one because I just copied the wrong one. Uh, where's our bit.ly? Oh, I thought I had it. Why not? Do one of you guys have the, um, uh, the link that just gives out the, and I don't have it, shame on me. Um, uh, do you guys, one of you guys have the link that, that people can sign up with so it has all of the signups? They have that. I'll try and find that for you right now. You got so. Yeah, I have it on my computer though. <laughs> okay, so but Carmen, I know we'll get. So I'm just gonna keep talking. It's great fun. Great. So first of all, I just want to thank the um, culture communities. You guys have been working tirelessly to to figure out how we can do Red Day in an environment when we're at stay home and stay healthy when we're sheltering in place. Wow, the creativity that you guys have come up with, what you've been able to do has really been extraordinary. So I think we need to really just applaud every single person uh, in our culture community and then all of the people who are going to be participating this year. This is not easy to participate even while we're sheltering in place. Um, of course, we want you to stay as healthy as possible. From me personally, I'm hoping every one of you wears a face mask. It has nothing to do with your health. Face mask is about the other person. Um, if my husband was out and about while he was doing grocery shopping, he was infecting people and he didn't even know it when he was infecting me. So just let you know, he feels bad about that. He's always wearing a mask now. I love my husband. It's great. But you want to make sure that you're always wearing masks. Um, uh, just so important on that when we're out and about having fun. Having said that, if you're in your car and you're driving past the, for the seniors, you can probably be okay without the mask. And say hi. I think that'll work out fine. Carmen, how are you doing? You getting there? I'm having trouble. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to let this go without us finding this. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to figure this out. Okay. I'm not going to give up, but I am having trouble. So Hey, Goldie, if you're watching this, if you can find that link where everybody can sign up, that would be fantastic. You could put it into the chat section. That would be great. I'm going to give it just another second here. Uh, I think, yeah, Goldie, I think so. It's, is it the Google Sheet link, the one where they sign up? or is it? No, it's actually a... I have it. Hang on. Can you put it in? Yep, hang on. Okay, here's what I'd like to do. If we can get this link in, um, that would be fantastic. Oh, there you go, you guys rock. Okay, here's what I'd like all of you to do. I know, I know, I know that you're going to participate in Red Day. I'm so excited. All now you need to do is just choose what event that you're gonna be taking a part of, or all of the events. Try all of them, that could be fantastic. Do me a favor, everybody, I'm gonna take um, a minute and a half, 
what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to click on that forms link that is in the um, chat section right now. I'd like you to go there, and then what I'd like you to do is sign up for one of those. So let's take uh, about a minute and a half to do that. Okay. If you can do that, raise your hand or say, say yes. As soon as you've done it, come back to the chat and say, I signed up. Will you? It's and super don't forget easy. that you sign up in both places. So sign up on there so we can track what everybody's doing and then make sure you sign up for whatever you guys are going to do on that direct link as well. Okay. Two That's places. Right. Got it? Super easy, yeah. super easy. Just click what you're going to participate in and then hit submit. You're good to go. Da, 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 da. Alex Trebek here. Yay! Thank you, Esther, so much. Thank you, Melinda. We so appreciate you doing that. Awesome. Keep them coming, guys. Tell us if you've signed in. Love it, love it. Woohoo! Thank you, Carmen. She's saying yay. She's a cheerleader. Yay. Thank you, Chris. That's awesome. Thank you for signing up. We so appreciate you. Fantastic. Oh, Jerry's having a hard time. We'll get you, we'll get you figured out. Thank you, Bill, so much. We so appreciate you. Let's keep it going, guys. We've got another minute or so. Thank you, Michelle. So appreciate you doing that. That's fantastic. Let's keep them coming, guys. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Tawny. You're amazing, and thank you for that awesome video. We loved you in there. That's great, Christine. Okay, Christine, we'll get you figured out too, not a problem. Robin, thank you so much. Julie, thank you so much. Laura, thank you so much. You guys are amazing, amazing. Okay, keep signing up. You guys have that link. Make sure you've clicked on that link before I end the call, so you've got that right now. That would be fantastic. Thank you, you amazing culture community chairs. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Okay, so what um, I want to say again is that this is going to be over. I promise you. We're, we're halfway through this, guys. We can do it. Just a few more weeks. Keep your head on straight. Stay in facts. Stay out of fear. Keep your, your state in peak state, because when you're in peak state, you're working it. And think about what Carla and Cheryl and Dan said. They all were in their mindset. Is their mindset started everything. Then they had a process and a plan that was working. They had skill sets to put it together. And if you take that stuff and you start putting some of the things that Guru was showing you today, I'm telling you what, guys, this is how you keep your business moving forward. You will, you will absolutely move your business forward and you'll keep your business going. We'll keep everything alive here, okay? All right, guys, I'm so happy to be back. I love seeing all of you and I hope everybody has a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal rest of your week. Go stay healthy, stay safe, and most of all, stay active. We'll see you later. Bye.